Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And uh, yeah, big day on the crossword front. So Simon's done a cryptic crossword as so often a Friday masterclass this morning. And uh, I've recorded a video that's gonna go up on Patreon tomorrow looking at one of the most outstanding listener puzzles in recent times from a few weeks ago. Um, not solving the puzzle so much as explaining how it works in the in the end game. It is, well, and indeed throughout the puzzle, it is a phenomenon. Um, and if you're on Patreon, have a look at that video tomorrow. Um, but we've got a puzzle called Arrow or Centipede by Eric Rathbun, who's featured a number of times on the channel and is back again today. Um, now, is this a group of arrows or a centipede? It looks like a sort of 12-legged mutant arachnid to me some dangerous tarantula has dropped into our sudoku it's very odd uh, shape but we'll look at this puzzle in a moment um i think it's straightforward rules if you know the sort of grid markings that we normally have uh do have a go at it if you want but on patreon we are less than halfway through the period of lines and shapes do give it a go loads of people are getting through it some of the puzzles are hard and uh Loads of people have different hardest puzzles in the set, which is quite interesting. Um, and we'd be very interested to hear your reaction to it. Do give it a try. It's great fun. That is also on Patreon for even the $2 a month patrons. Thank you for helping us if you do that. Uh, thank you for buying our apps if you do that. And there are some great puzzles on those featuring all the rule sets we're looking at today, amongst others. Arrows, Crop Key, uh, as in Domino Sudoku, and... Uh, killer Sudoku too. So that's available too. Check out the links under the video where you can also find Sven's Sudoku pad and our merchandise. The, the caps are going very well this year, which is great news. Um, but do also consider getting a beanie because it's winter coming up eventually. Although not today, it's absolutely roasting again. Uh, anyway, let's have a look at this puzzle by Eric. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So one to nine is going to go in every row, every column, and every three by three box, like with almost all the Sudokus we do. Digits along an arrow, sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. Now this needs a bit of explaining today. There's a lot of arrows and only one circle. But basically, any digits along an arrow that leads to the circle contribute to a sum of whatever's in the circle. So those two will add up to the same as that. Those three will add up to the same as that. Those two will add up to the same as that, etc. And I believe there are 12 tips. So there must be 12 sums all coming to the same number. Fascinating. Um, so the arrow is definitely the big feature here, but we also have cages where the clue in a cage indicates its sum. Um, and we have some white dots, which have a difference of one between the two digits they feature, and a couple of black dots, which have a ratio of one to two. So one of these numbers is double the other. Give it a try on the first link. I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. Well, I can see that in this central box, none of these digits on two cell or more arrows can be nine, because that would make this more than nine. And we're not allowed that. So I'm going to whack a, a nine in the middle of the grid. Um, and now I don't know what to do next. And the disambiguation is going to have to come from outside this marvelously symmetrical center box. So, I mean, maybe the next thing to do is to consider where does eight go? And it, it doesn't go in those cells. This is the eight in the central box I'm talking about. It doesn't go in those cells. Because although you could make these sums work, you couldn't make these sums work. And in fact, seven couldn't go in these cells either, because these are always going to be at least a one-two pair. Actually, let's think a bit further about that, because these four cells will all have to be different. And even if they were the minimum four digits, one, two, three, and four, adding up to ten, half of that is five. So these would both have to add up to at least five. And that is actually going to keep these digits down below five to make the sums work. Uh, one, two, three, four would have a five here. Yes, what I'm now seeing is that if that sum is the same as that sum, then those two must equal that one. And those two must equal that one and those two as well. And that's going to apply over here. So this is always going to be a sum of each of these two-digit pairs. 
And it's always going to, because these are one, two, three, or four, this is going to be five, six, seven, or eight. Now, the question I originally asked was eight, where does eight go? And I expanded it to where does seven go? And it goes in one of these cells, and therefore something here is one or two. The same is now true about six and five. They must also be in these cells. So these cells must contain one, two, three, and four amongst their digits. They must, th those four digits must all be here. In fact, these six digits I've got highlighted now will all be different because they're all complements of the nine sum and these six are all different. That's quite strange. Um, and I don't know if it really helps, but it is worth bearing in mind. These six are all different digits and they definitely include one, two, three, and four. Now, if that was a five, these would be a one, four, and a two, three pair, and that would be a four. If this was six, there'd be a one, five, and a two, four pair with a three here. I don't really think I can get much further with this thinking at the moment, which is quite frustrating. And, yeah, I feel a bit stuck, actually. You know, the nine went bang in the centre of the grid, and then everything else has, has uh, slowed down to a, a snail's pace since then. And I don't really know what to think about in the puzzle at all. So bear with me while I... Yeah, this I don't think the cages have particularly appealing sums. They don't really rule things out. So... They're more for later disambiguation. Maybe these white and black dots can do us some good. And I'm thinking especially the white dots that overlap with the arrows. The trouble with this is it's not a sequence necessarily. These two could be the same digit. I don't know how you make progress here. I, I need to think very clearly about this and, and come up with something interesting. The, all I've got so far is that five, six, seven, and eight must be in those cells. So one, two, three, and four must be in these six different numbers. Now, there have to be some repeats. These six different numbers must have at least, well, exactly two overlaps with these six numbers. Um, no, I don't know. Maybe I need to think more about these. The, the four and three we considered, they, they push five and six into these cells, and there's only one way to make up each of these sets if you use five and six here, in the sense that the, if you have a five here, these digits that have to add up to two sets of five must use one, two, three, four. If you have a six, you must use one, two, four, five. If you have a seven or an eight, there are different combination possibilities. You can use any of one, six, two, five, and three, four with a seven. And you can use any of one, seven, two, six, and three, five with an eight. I don't know. Do I, what does this white dot do? What's that? here for? Or do I think about x-wings on nines? That's quite interesting. None of these cells can contain a nine. Ah, okay. So nine in all of these rows has to be in one of those cells. Right, we're going to color them. Nine must be in each of those two by two blocks. Um, that's not necessarily right, actually. You could have nine, 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 nine. But nine can only be in these rows, in those two by two blocks. And there will be four nines in those. So that will use up all the nines in these columns, in columns one, two. This is, this is not an arrow or centipede. It is a jellyfish that uses four different rows and columns. That is the technical Sudoku jargon for a position where if you were just using two um, rows and columns to identify where two digits could be in one of two places, that would be an X-wing. If you use three, 
it's a swordfish and if you use four it's a jellyfish so this is not an arrow or a centipede it's a blooming jellyfish which explains the number of tentacles perhaps anyway what we've learned is that nine can't go in any of these places because in these columns it's in the purple areas and that's good here maybe nowhere else it's certainly good here where if you can't have a nine in a 21 cage it is eight seven six now how are we going to expand this out well okay we've also got a set of these cages which must have nines in as well it's another jellyfish <laughs> that's so crazily freakily weird it's definitely genuine um, now that one can't be a nine because it's on a black dot of course they can't be a nine because they're on a black dot now black dots can't have nine on because uh, there is no Sudoku digit that is half or double nine now what is that telling me does there have to be a nine in this pair yes the nine in column two now has to be in one of those cells the nine ah oh no the nine in column one could be in the other they could be a pair of nines like that so it doesn't have to be a nine in these cells can I do something with the eight seven and six that have popped up here not sure hmm um, I'm not sure I'm wondering whether I can say that these are eight and seven but I haven't seen the reason why I can say that if it exists I've got eight seven six here now eight can uh, will be in one of these cells ah one of these is a one and whichever one it is is on a two cell arrow good lord mavericks turned up so in a helicopter this time so one of those cells is definitely going to be an eight and i think that the effect of that I think the effect of that is going to be to remove eight from somewhere am I right I don't know it's going to apply with seven as well um, eight has to be in one of these highlighted cells so does seven because again there was there is a two ah yeah okay so in fact these highlighted cells let's give them another color they're a set of the digits one to eight they're the complement set of this set of the digits one to eight now what does that mean if there was an eight here and it's quite a plausible position then I think there has to be no we've had an eight down here the purples aren't aren't relevant to whether well okay if there's an eight here there's no eight here or here and there's no eight here or here where are the eights in rows three and seven well they're in these five cells ah no that doesn't they couldn't be in this box because there is an eight in that box I don't quite know what it means I'm sorry I'm, I'm taking my time over this because I'm not quite getting to the bottom of it there's clearly something going on with this this crazy jellyfish in the middle um, nines are in the colored boxes although not necessarily each domino within the colored boxes we don't know i don't think 18 is big enough to need a nine in it it could be no it definitely isn't it could be eight six four seven six five all sorts of possibilities but if we could if we could rule something about eights maybe we can make that 18 cage seven six five 
that might be what we have to do. I wonder how. Unless it's me aiming for a target rather than working a priori. Um, alternatively, if we could put an 8 in the 12 cage, we would know it was 831. So there are lots of ways of going about this. It so depends on where where certain digits are here. And I think it's what's interesting is where are the low digits? One, two, three, and four. Because they force where eight, seven, six, five, and eight, seven, six, and five go in the in the bright blue cells. Now, if there was an eight there, then, then there couldn't be an eight here. These can't have an 8 in because their, their arrow will get too big. Same is true for 7. They can't... Oh, they could actually have a 7 in if the arrow went 7, 1, 1. So these can't have an 8 in. So maybe I need to forget my 9s and focus on where 8s can't go. 1, 8 in the blue circle. Oh, is it Fistema fell? How have I not thought of, how have I got all this coloured and I haven't thought of the Fistema Fell ring? Okay, well let me briefly explain Fistema Fell. We will clear the grid of its colours for now and I will point out that we know that these 16 digits in the Fistema Fell ring are the same digits as go in these 16 cells on the outside. The reason we know that is by comparing that row, which must contain the digits 1 to 9, plus that row, which must contain the digits 1 to 9 a second time, that box and that box. We can, that, so that's four sets of the digits 1 to 9 by rule. And we compare those with um, the first two columns and the last two columns. We'll, which obviously each column contains a set of the digits 1 to 9, so that's a different set of the four digits 1 to 9. Now, if out of our two bags of those four digits 1 to 9, we take out these 20 digits, which, whatever they are, appear once in each bag, then we're left with these areas coloured, which must be the same digits from sets of the digits 1 to 9, and that's why the Fistema Fell ring works. Now, what we have worked out is that this is a set of the digits 1 to 8. Yes. None of these cells in the rest of the Fistema Fell ring can be 9 either. And none of them can be 8 because they're all on 3 cell arrows. So in these Fistema Fell boxes on the outside, there, is no, there are no 9s, hence 8, 7, 6. And there's only one 8, and that's here in the 876 cage. So this is now the 765 cage. Well done if you got there before me. That's fine. I'm not great at Fist and Fell. It's taking 15 minutes. I feel a bit ridiculous about that. But now, what else have we got? How many 7s can there be? There can be one in the bright blue set, which are a set of the digits 1 to 8. There can only be one in one of these cells. Although I identified that we could have a 7-1-1 arrow, we can only have one of them because it's going to put a 1 in the central box and you can't then or have another. So one of these is a 7-1-1 arrow because we are going to get two 7s in the Fistema Fell boxes. So one of these digits is definitely a 1, and now we know that the 8 is in one of those digits, and the other blue digits don't contain 8. Where's 8 in row 7? It's in one of these two cells. No, I know that can't be 8. We've worked out that can't be by the blue box logic, and that can't be because it's already in the box. Now, what other digits? We've got two 6s already in the Fistema Fell numbers. One of them is going to be in this blue area. The other one is going to be on one of these arrows. 
And that arrow, since it can't force a 1 into the central box, is going to force a 2 into the central box. That arrow is going to be a 6-1 pair on the outside and a 2 in one of these positions. So they have become a 1-2 pair, which I was wondering. This is now a 7-8 pair. And these digits are... Well, these digits are 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And therefore, these digits are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I believe. Now, I don't know how to pencil mark that one of these is a 7, 1, and one of them is a 6, 1. But that is the case. Um, of course, we have the 8 on one side taking the 7, 1 because of the parity, the, the sort of equality we worked out earlier. And on the other side, we have the 7 taking a 6-1, which is good because it stops 1 getting into both boxes. Now, we've used up all the 6s we can use. We can't put 6 on another of these arrows because we've used up the 1s in columns 3 and 7 on our hypothetical 7-1 and 6-1 arrow. Wow. So, there is one 6 in the blue area. We've created a 6-1 arrow. That's both 6s. And look, one of them appears there and one appears there. So none of the rest of these boxes can contain 8, 7, or 6, or 9. So we're down to 5, 4, 3 for the 12K, which isn't that clever. It really is pretty, this. Um, now do I actually have to work on, on what digits go in here? I don't know. Um, Right, so one of these has a 7-1 pair, one has a 6-1 pair. Yes, we've doubled 5, so we're going to have to... We're only going to get one 5 in the bright blue area, so we're going to have to put a 5 on one of these columns, when one of those dominoes, and it's going to not be able to go with a 1, so it's going to have to go with a 2 or a 3. I don't know which it is. Um, yeah, I've just got to make some sort of aid memoir note. So one of these arrows is going to contain seven and one. One of them is going to contain, on the other side, one of them is going to contain one and six. Now, oh, I'm so sorry. I'll just get rid of that. There we go. Okay, so. We've got a 1-7 arrow, we've got a 1-6 arrow. The other two are going to add up to 8 and 7, and one of them involves a 5, definitely. 8, 7, 6, 7, 6, 5, yeah, okay. One of them involves a 5, but I don't know whether it's 5 and 2 or 5 and 3. Oh, goodness, okay, I'm getting... Oh, look, though, I've got fives. Ah, I've got an X-wing on fives between those areas. So now there must be a five in one of these cells in row three. Let's get rid of that aid memoir. That means one of these is a three. Is that anything? Excuse me a second. Sorry. I hope I've edited that out. Okay, so we've got a three in one of these cells. Is that doing anything? I doubt it. Ah, but five is now not in one of those. There's got... No, I was going to say there's got to be a five here, but there could be a five here. I don't know what this ten cage is made up of. I thought this would just iterate around. I can't rule out that we've got another five to come in these cells, can I? I mean, we've got... A 1-7 on one side and a 1-6 on the other side in one of these dominoes. One of them needs a 5, but it could be a 5-2 on the 7 side or a 5-3 on the 8 side. I can't figure that out in my head. I'm sorry. Um... OK, I'm going to think about something else, actually, then. I'm going to think about this digit, which share, appears in this cage somewhere here. In box 3, it appears somewhere in one of these three cells. 
Now, if it was there, well, it couldn't be seven. Oh, that's weird. Oh, I'm not getting this at all. Got seven and eight. We've got five here. I want to do a bit more. Um, ay, 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 ay. I, feel, I feel like we've made great progress, but I still don't understand how to get get going in the puzzle properly. Okay, there can't be a seven in this cage because we've used the full number of sevens. There can't be a six in the cage, can there? There can't be a six. Because we've used a six one arrow. Ah, this is what I haven't thought. So we've used a one seven arrow. We've used a one six arrow somewhere. And they've required these. I don't think we can have another six arrow. Or maybe we... Oh, my goodness. It's so annoying. I'm so sorry. Right. Now, did I get there? I don't think that's an annoying interruption because I was wondering whether the same side as we have an 8, we can have a 7-1 with a 1. Can we now have a 6-2 with a 1? I think we can. We've got two 6s but we've already thought of, we've got a one, one of the sixes in blue and we've already thought of a one six arrow. So I don't think we can rule out this from being six three one. That's annoying, I wanted to. Ah, actually, if it is six three one, we've got six X wings all over the place. That's gonna put a six in one of those cells. Oh, my maths is terrible. I've put a three there. That must be a four going with the five. Okay, that would put a six in one of these cells and a six in one of those. Not really a problem. Is it? I don't think it is. Maybe I have to think about these cells now. Which must, okay, they must contain a one and a two. Well, no, that, those, those, well, they can't, okay, they, they can't both be in this cage because it can't be a 721 cage. So one of these is a 1 or a 2 because there is definitely a 1 or a 2 in blue. Actually, there's also, oh, there are three 1s. There's a 1 in blue. That's it. And there's a 1 on each of the other 7 and 1 and 6 1 arrows I've posited. So we need to get three 1s into the Fistemafel ring. And that is either a one there, which stops there being a one here. Right, to get three ones in, we can't put them in those three cages. Indeed, we can't put a one here, because then those two couldn't be a one, and only one of these could be a one. So to get three ones in, we've got to put them in these cells. Oh, that's beautiful. And there. Now the 10 cage doesn't have a 1 in, and it is 2, 3, 5, therefore. Oh, my goodness. So there's a 5. This is another 5 X-wing. There's a 5 in one of those cells. And there can't be a 1 beyond it. So there's a 2 or a 3, which can't be here because of the 1, 2, 3, 5. Oh, that's brilliant. This is 2 or 3 plus the five, that is now where the five goes. It couldn't go there anymore. Um, we've got the ones. What we, do we know what this is? <laughs> I don't know. That's so fascinating. Whatever this is, yeah, we've still got to make up these totals. So we've got a, f oh, we're still gonna use Okay, this is now either a 1-6 or a 1-7 arrow, and we know where the 1 goes, because there is there is a 1-6 arrow one side and a 1-7 arrow the other. This side, there can't be a 1 in either of those, so this is the 1-6 or 1-7 arrow. This time I don't know which of the arrow digits the 1 is in, but it's in one of them. 
And now, what have we got? Remember that the blues are a set of 1 to 8. How am I going to mark these off? Right, a set of 1 to 8. So, let's unpurple those. 1, 6, 7, 8. 3, 4, 5. And we've used the 2 from this area. That's the blues. Then we've got a 1, 6 and a 1, 7 to take out of the equation. So we're just going to be left with 5 up here. And we're getting rid of all the 1s. So down here we've got 3 and 5. Up here we've got 5. And then we've got that. 5. We need another 5 on this arrow. We've got to put a 3, which could be there. And we've got to put whatever this is, which can't be another 3. So if this is 1, 6 and that's 5, 3, this is 1, 7. No, if that's 1, 7, that's 5, 3. Then this is 1, 6 and 5, 2. If that's 1, 6 and 5, 2, that's 1, 7 and 5, 3 to make these equalities work. So there is going to be a 2 and a 3. So that's a 2. And that gets rid of all the colouring, I reckon. We've, we've done the sort of Fistemafel stuff. I'm going to leave these blues coloured because... They matter. They, they are a set of 1, 2, 8. Now, where have we got to now? Um, I want to disambiguate these blooming things. I don't think I can do it yet. 5, 6, 7, 1. Oh, gosh. We're going to have to use the black crop key dot, or the black and white dots now. Can that be a 1? Yes. That would be 2, and that would be 3. Have I got any more X-wings that I'm not using? Can I place 1? I don't know, it's odd that I couldn't put 1. Ah, there is a 1 in one of those two cells. That's Sudoku. There is a 1 in one of these three, and that's the 1 in the blue area. So there's an 8 there. So there isn't a 1 here, and there isn't a 1 here. So again, one of these two is a 1. So we've got a little X-wing on 1s. Um, any, other, any other bits and pieces? I don't know. I'm going to have to do this thing. So annoying. Or this one. This can't have a 1 on. I mean, that's not enough information. It could be 4, 2 if it was 4 there and 2 there. It could be 3, 6. And although that also has an effect here, it's not one I understand. If it was 4, 8, it would have to be that way round as well. But 3, 6 doesn't have a particular way round. Oh, what do I need to think about? 2s. Those can't be 2s. Those can't be 2s. Ah. Uh. I, how do I not know which way round these went? It's probably something very obvious. Um, so one side of this equation, we're looking at 3, 5, 8, 1, 7. Then that would be a 2. 6 would be down here. So, OK, 6 must be in this group of cells. This isn't, the, this isn't going to get anything done. Two, three, four, five. I don't think I can even pull off even that little trick anywhere else. OK, let's think about whether that can be a five. They would both have to be sixes. Oh, this black dot can't have a one or a two on it. So it's either a four, eight or a three, six pair. That's actually worth pencil marking. That's been obvious for ages. Gosh. So there's also a 1 somewhere up here. And that's not really doing anything for me. Now, there must be a 1 and a 5 in operation there. Oh, and we've got... No, we've... I don't know. 
five, two, which way round do they go? We've done so much work and I still can't see a way through this. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. One, six, seven, eight. We've got two, three, five, four, nine to put in here. Four has to be in one of these cells. So these are from 2359, and that one's not a 2. Now what does that mean for... Well, 8 was in one of those. It doesn't really mean anything for these, necessarily. We can't have a 5 there. I kind of knew that already. I haven't even managed to rule out that being a 1. That is so frustrating. I think it's very unlikely to be a one. You'd have three, two, seven. Okay, I can rule out that being a one now, but it's a bit complicated. That would be a two. And that would be a three, so that would be a one. And then weirdly, both of these would have to be seven, because where we're using the one with a one on both the outside and the inside is on the 171 arrow. Where we're using 1 and 6 is with the 2 arrow to get up to 9. So they'd both be 7, so that is not the 1. That's interesting. I mean, that's a very unusual use for that pair of white dots, but it gets this pair of 1s in the X-wing disambiguated, and I, I still don't think that's going to finish me off at all, but we get a 6 or a 7 there. Now, what were these? These were from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in the remaining blue cells. So that is now 5 or 6. Has to be. This one, well, bother. It can be 4, 5, 6 or 7 and still touch that 6 or 5. If that was 4, 5, this would be 3, 6. So somewhere in here a 6 is being used. If that was 5, 6... This would be 4, 8, and if it was 6, 7, it would be 4, 8. So 4 and 6 are definitely being used across these cells. So these can't be 4s. Is that right? I just want to check that. If that's 3, 6, yes, 4 must be used here. So those can't be 4s, and that's not a 4. 4 in the blue is down on this side, and 5 is in one of those. And that's not a 5, but this arrow needs a 5 on, so it's there. Um, come on, do something. Sort out these for me. I don't think it's going to. It doesn't feel like that's going to. There's definitely a 6 on one of, in one of those cells. Doesn't get anything done. Um, these two add up to 4. Four. They're either a 1-3 pair or a 2-2 two, two pair. Now, if they were a 2-2 two, two pair, then we have 2 in one of these cells, which either requires a 4 there or a 3 there, which is a weird pairing up of things. OK, what about this row? We've got 1 and 2. There must be a 9 in one of these two. No, that's not something I can instantly use either. Fine. I mean, I'm so close here now. Fistemafel ring. I mean, it's took me so long to see that, that this is becoming quite a long video. It was probably very obvious to some of you straight away. That's always what the comments say. Ah, look, these are from 6789. So that is a 6789 quad. In fact, that must be 7 or 8. 6 and 9 have to be in this group. Um, and 6789 there, these are from 2, 3, and 4. So 9 is definitely in one of these two cells, and now it's definitely in one of these two cells, and now it's definitely in one of these two cells and it's not on the black dot. So 9 goes here, 
Uh, nine now has to be in one of these three, but it can't be on the black dot or in the same row as another nine. So we get a second nine. Nine's in one of these. I think my nine trail is going to run cold. There is also a nine up here somewhere. So I can actually place the nine in box three as well. There we go. That was probably it for the nines, sadly. Now, we've got to have a five in the central row. So that's in one of those two. These are from three, four, and six by elimination. Five, nine, right. Has this changed? Well, we've got to get an eight into the column. And if it's not there, it's a four, eight pair. Can that be three, six? That would be four, that would be two, five, that would be seven, that would be eight. Yes, it can. Can it be four, eight? Definitely. Okay, what about this on the white dot with three, four, or six? And it can't be five, but it could still be two, three. Oh, it can't be four either. Um, two, three, six, or seven, but it can't be six because this is not able to be five or seven. So that is two, three, or seven. Now, if I could limit it to just three or seven, that three or seven would have to be in one of these cells, which is very surprising. Oh, nine, no, we've done nine, five, eight, four, one, two. We've got three, six, and seven to determine between these groups. This, this probably shouldn't be this hard at this point, but here we are. Now, this, these are from, well, that's three, four, or eight. These are from two, three, four, or eight. What does that do? If this was four, eight, that has to be three, and you've got five, and then this must be six or seven. But if this is not 4, 8. If it's 3, 6, I don't know. This could still be a 4, 5 pair in that way. So it hasn't, re hasn't really fixed anything. Ah, oh, I was nearly wondering if one of those has to be 6, so that can't be. That would be very helpful if I could make that contention. But I think that can be 6. If that's 6, you've got a 5, 7 pair here. You've got a five here. So if that's six, you've got a five here. That's a four, eight pair. That's three and that's seven. So the only way there isn't a six here there's a six here and that ends up being seven and six becomes here. Ah, that didn't do anything. Or did it? Did it stop this being a five? I'm sure this sort of step isn't needed. I'm sorry. I, I'm just trying to get through this. Um, right. None of these, I've just noticed, can be a seven because we can't put two in those. None of those can be a seven. So seven's definitely in one of those two cells in that row, and that's not seven. Now, that doesn't do anything. But down here, none of these can be seven for the same sort of reason. So seven must be in one of these three. And that doesn't do anything down here either. One, two, three, five, seven, eight, six, nine. I've got them pencil marked all over this box and not put in it. Ah, this can't be two or eight, because that can't be four. This old black dot thing. Now that's more interesting. Is that right? Yes, it is. That is right. It can't be two or eight. That is three or four. Two and eight are included here. And that is a seven. Done it. Oh, that's taken forever. Right. Seven there, eight there. These have to add up to that seven. Five and two. So do these, one and six. These have to add up to eight, three and five. These have to add up to seven. Oh, I mean, we're away. Literally, I'm unstoppable now, he says. Probably about to be brought to a screeching halt. 
two there. There's no two there. Um, that can't be a two. We got this six. That didn't do anything. Three or four there. I've, I've left with quite some possibilities, but six there. So this is now odd. Five or seven. In this row, these are from three, four, or five. So the, but they can't have a four because we can't have a five beneath. So that's a three, five pair. This is a six, four pair. Let's get rid of all those corner marks. They're useless now. That has become a four, which doesn't resolve the digit beneath it on the black dot. But no, I was going to say they do, but they don't. This has to be a three, though. There we go. OK, so that can't be a three. This now can't be a four, I reckon. Four, six, three. This is a set of five, seven, eight. The blue digits here, three, five, six, seven, eight, they should be one, two, four. That seems to work. This is now a seven, eight pair. This is a nine, four pair. Ooh, I've got a white dot here I'm about to run into, but that's a three, eight pair, first of all. We can't have a three or a six in this box. That's now a four, eight pair. That's going to sort out some stuff. This is a five. Those two are not. That's a three, four pair. That's become a seven. That's become a six. Five, seven, eight, six, three, four at the top. We've got a one, two, nine set to place. Um, a few more corner marks to dispense with. That's not an eight. Right, let's have a look at this dot. So this is three, five, or eight. That's not what I was hoping it would do for me. OK, let's look in this box. Oh, I'm sure there's just Sudoku all over the place now. 54631. Uh, that is 7 or 9. I'm not finding the Sudoku all over the place. We've got 2, 4 and 6. That is 2 or 4 in this row. They include a 6. Now... What about here? Five, one, seven, nine. Oh, seven there made that a two. There we go. Sorry, I'm in the wrong mode. Two there, three below it. That is a four. That's a six. That's an eight. The box is finished. I like finishing a box. It gives me a sense of achievement. Finished box one as well now. And column one there. Right. Um, three, nine. One, eight, three. They don't have a four. That's a two, six pair, which are resolved. There we go. Six and two. That becomes a seven at the bottom. Yeah, that's genuine. Six, eight pair. Right, I must be able to do these. I've got a seven, nine pair up here. I can do them indeed. And then I could do the four, five pair below. That gets me four and three in the corner. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spot. Light throwing its confetti. Um, this hasn't got resolved at all. Ah, oh, but of course, these add up to nine, so we get the two and the one. Now, what's that going to do? No two there, no nine there, no one there. No two here, and no one here. Seven, six, three, one. No seven there. 7631, I'm just looking up and down this column. No, it's got to be this column with the white dot cell. Um, but I don't know what to do with it. Is there some digit that's just hard to feature in it? Oh, 1 and 4 there removed 7 from this one. 2 and 4 there removed 8 from this one. This has to be a 5-4 pair. It can't be 8, 1 or 2, 7. Yes, OK, that does work. 5, 4 there. That's a 1, that's a 2, that's a 7, that's an 8. It's just maths, isn't it, at the end of the day? That sorts out the black dot, 4 and 8. That sorts out the last tentacles of our jellyfish in the middle, which is not an arrow or a centipede in my personal estimation. 2 and 1. Now we're going to finish. That's become a 5 on the white dot, which is going to sort out the bottom two rows for us. What a lovely puzzle, Eric. What a brilliant piece of work. Great fun. Um, I don't know. I just really get a kick out of this sort of puzzle. It's so 
It's so elegant, it's so complex but brilliant. And that is a nine. There we go. 47 minutes. Oh, I didn't know it was going to take that long. Wow. Wow. My apologies. Anyway, there we go. That is the puzzle today. Great stuff from Eric Rathman. And thank you for watching us, all, as always, on the channel. Hope I edited out the call with the delivery driver. I will see you again soon. Uh, tomorrow morning. No, tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow morning if you look on Patreon. And uh, tomorrow afternoon. See you then. Bye for now.